Is it good? I think so, yeah. Okay. Well, I can try it back here. No, it's good. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, Dr. Chomsky, I'm um, I'm uh, Jim Katsinas. I'm um, I'm a veterinarian, and I'm also uh, um, I've become a sort of a, a politically awakened person, um, and um, I've been wanting to meet you since uh, 2006 when uh, when I I ran I came from Greece because I was very upset about what was going on, and I. It was sort of a, a protest type of thing, and I ran on an Impeach Bush platform in Connecticut, where I'm a veterinarian, um, and I, I actually got five percent of the vote um, mm -hmm. as an independent. I think um, the fact that that uh, Joe Lieberman was also running there, and he was saying, "Everybody, look at the independents at the bottom." And <laughs> I see. So I, I think that yeah. helps. So um, uh, I I wanted to meet you uh, since then. Um, uh, and uh, it, it, you're a, a you're a role model to me as a, you know a, for activism, and um, um, I I just uh, never had the you know the opportunity to, to come and, and, and meet you. And the reason that I have this now is because of this initiative on uh, on world peace that uh, I'm uh, trying to um, promote. And uh, the uh, case for for space is um, what uh, I'm trying to say. That basically, I'm thinking with this uh, with the thermo the, the problem of that you can't unvent uninvent thermonuclear weapons, and uh, it's impossible, I think, to to really expect one nation to disarm. Because the other nation, even if they do it bilaterally, or they, there's the problem of cheating, and there could be perce a perception of, um, well, maybe you know they can get a first strike in, and then we won't be able to respond. Um, so it seems that because it's such a serious issue, I mean, the 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 doomsday clock is only it's at 12 minutes now or something. I don't know. Um, that uh, the um, uh, I think that the only thing that that we need to, they need to be dismantled is just to become obsolete. And the only way that I can really think of it for being obsolete is a sort of a you know a, a world federation of, of states. And um, in order to hasten this, I have uh, thought that um, we the only way to do this is to enlist the industrial complex in wanting to, this to happen. And the only way that they'll want it to happen is if they can make money off of it. So if they can sort of it's change their, um, their negative, uh, let's say, destructive, uh, the, the humans are not, um, their humans are not completely rational. We've got irrational, aggressive tendencies. And and, and these tendencies or this libido or this energy needs to go somewhere right? and it, if we could put it into space then it's I think it, it, it might hasten the uh, the uh, and maybe we'll have time to um, so I thought that it would be good because it, it would it people can make money by by going into space and, and diverting um, energies from war or basically money that's being spent on, on, on defense and, and use that in space. And if you could even sort of make the argument that we need to, to get into space in order for defense somehow so that you can use the same sort of um, reasoning that they're using now to, for this massive uh, military buildup, which is probably... I mean, in my view, it's unnecessary. I don't know, and that's why I don't want to talk a lot. You're here, and you know, I want to get I wanted to get your views on that. It kind of reminds me of uh, something that uh, Jerry Wiesner said about 50 years ago. He's, Jerry Wiesner was the director of the Research Lab of Electronics here, later president of MIT. But in the interim, he was uh, John F. Kennedy's uh, the science advisor, and he pointed out once, he was very active in working on disarmament. 
he said, the only way we'll ever get disarmament is if there's more money to be made in disarmament than in armament. So he was therefore quite interested in developing uh, 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 techniques for uh, un underground testing and so on and so forth. Uh, but there are many things that money could go into that are much more significant, in my opinion, than going into space. So, for example, we're probably going to be wiped out by environmental catastrophe before we are by nuclear weapons, or it's at least possible. And that has to be overcome. And that requires a, a substantial technological development. Uh, ultimately, it probably means harnessing so solar energy in some fashion, which is a serious technological problem. Plenty of, plenty of effort can go into it. The U.S. is a laggard in this. Uh, most, the advanced work is mostly being done in China and uh, Germany, but that's uh, natural. And uh, there's plenty of other possible uh, development that can use enormous amounts of uh, capital that would have a constructive uh, impact on developing things we need, like uh, something as simple as, say, weatherization or high-speed rail, or again, the U.S. is way behind much of the world. You can take a high-speed train from China to Kazakhstan, but not from Boston to New York. You know. uh, all of these things are capital-intensive, uh, constructive uh, uh, actions that can be taken to uh, divert uh, funding away from the military uh, complex. Now, I think space is a dubious one because that's being used for the, by the military. So the military is quite happy to in fact, developing, you know, you take a look at the, uh, the reviews for the Air Force mainly of their plans. A lot of it is developing space-based uh, attack systems, you know, uh, hydrosonic, uh, uh, hypersonic planes that uh, uh, can be computer controlled and have surveillance over the world and drop uh, nuclear weapons any time, any place, in uh, practically no time and with, yeah. uh, with a lot of surveillance to surveillance system so precise they hope that they can see a person walking across the street and so on and so forth. Well, these things are, uh, and much more sophisticated drones and so on, these are all being developed and uh, uh, pressure, pressing uh, uh, for more space-oriented activities is almost certain to be diverted into these directions. My feeling, I think the logic of what you're saying makes sense, but it seems to me that it ought to be, uh, what ought to be targeted and focused is uh, 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 production and technological development in domains that are really needed, badly needed, or we're going to be in real trouble. Yes. Like and dealing with climate catastrophe. The, um, um, the the reason that I'm um, uh, I, I understand it, that doesn't really I mean th another objective here is if uh, if we're going to be avoid getting wiped out I mean as as a, as a, as humans um, we need to get colonies going in other areas that's I guess I am I mean um, and and this and this wouldn't hasten it by it wouldn't hasten world government either, so I guess extraterrestrial colonies, extraterrestrial colonies. Yeah. Well, I'm no specialist on no, this, but nobody my, is. I well, don't. my understanding is that that's very far very away. Very far away. And uh, by the time anything like that happens, we'll have killed ourselves oh, with so global with uh, global warming. So I think we ought to be focused on things that'll, you know. It can be done right now. Get right now, and because uh, we don't have a lot of time, and the same is true of nuclear weapons. I mean, I, you know, I, I think the, of course, you can never be a hundred percent sure that there'll never be any uh, cheating, but you're never a hundred percent sure of anything. You're not a hundred percent sure that the world won't be hit by an asteroid, uh, but I think the uh, probability of detection of cheating is very high now. Uh, the technology for detecting uh, potential explosions, the technology for surveillance is already very high and can be substantially improved. So I think that cheating is not a major problem. Yes, it's never 100%, but nothing is. Uh, the, uh, that technology is either there or imminent. 
Uh, and in fact, there are countries that have abandoned nuclear weapons. Uh, Brazil was about to develop them. Uh, uh, South Africa already had developed them and abandoned them. Uh, Japan is one of many countries that has nuclear capability. They can develop them with a you know, like turn of a screw, as they say. But uh, they're not doing it. And I think the thing to do is to move towards reducing tensions and conflicts and introducing uh, systems of control which will uh, reduce the likelihood of their use. And that's very feasible. In fact, there's something right this minute that can be done. And I mean... What's that? Well, impo introducing nuclear weapons for his own. Uh, uh -huh. And in fact, the most crucial area is the Middle East. Uh -huh. uh, there's a lot of claims about... It's claimed in the United States and much of Europe that the greatest threat to world peace is Iran. Uh, the rest of the world doesn't agree with that, but that's a Western obsession. So, okay, let's say it's true. The threat is Iran. It's something very straightforward to do about it. Uh, move towards establishing a nuclear weapons free zone in the Middle East. Huh. Now, it turns out the entire world is in favor of that, including Iran. And it's very feasible. Uh, there was a international conference scheduled, was supposed to be this, right now, December, uh, in Helsinki, to take substantive steps towards uh, the moving in this direction. Uh, the, the U.S. called it off. Hmm. Uh, well, n there's no way of protesting that unless you know about it. And on this, the U.S. press has been approximately 100, close to 100% obedient. They don't report it. Huh. So nobody knows about it. Uh, you take a survey, you'll see it's almost unknown, uh, unless you're a an, you know, an arms control addict, you don't know about it. Uh, and virtually no one knows that a couple of weeks ago Obama called it off. Wow. Uh, the reason was Israel refused to attend. Iran agreed to attend, but Israel refused. So we got to protect Israel, you know. And uh, uh, well, there's very concrete steps that can be taken. And if there was mass public pressure, they would be taken. And it wouldn't end the, you know, a crisis, but it would reduce it significantly. Huh. Definitely. Uh, there are other uh, nuclear weapons-free zones in the world, which, if implemented, would make a difference. They'd reduce the threat. They'd reduce the kinds of tensions that might lead to something happening. Uh, one is in Africa. Another is in the Pacific. And they're almost ready to be implemented. But there's one barrier, Washington. Huh. The United States refuses to relinquish its uh, nuclear bases in Diego Garcia, an island in the Indian Ocean that's claimed by Africa. Uh, and until the US does that, the African zone won't be implemented. Uh, in the Pacific, the US uh, refuses to abandon its nuclear bases in the Pacific Islands. Um, so that one's not implemented. Uh, but, you know, these are steps that are, could be taken if people knew about them. Yes. And uh, there's other things like that. Actually, the UN General Assembly just uh, passed strong resolutions just a couple of days ago and uh, calling for, actually calling for the uh, conference on uh, uh, weapons free zone in the Middle East, which the US had blocked, but also calling for all countries to uh, joined the Non-Proliferation Treaty. Uh, three countries objected. The U.S., I don't, I think, abstained. Uh, three countries voted no. Uh, North Korea, India, and Israel. Huh. Well, both India and Israel are supported in, the, in their nuclear weapons programs by the U.S. Yes. So there, there are things we can do right here. Right you know, not Not far-fetched and straightforward, you know, no, no, no utopian proposals, just simple proposals. Simple proposals. They're not going to end everything, but they, these things have a you know, kind of a self-supportive effect. If you can get something done, it leads to something else. Mm, it leads as a, yeah. as a... It's a step. It's a step which gets people to realize, look, there's a problem, we can deal with it, let's go on. Um, what do you think about, um, I mean, how can people get information then? I mean, uh, if uh, if it's so if it's so controlled, uh, I mean, 
It's hard. It's hard. I mean, I've, you know, you can get it. It's, it's a, you know, you don't get put in jail for publishing it. I, I've been writing about it for years. I've been writing about it right now. I lecture about it, but uh, so you don't get tossed into the gulag. You know, you just ignore it. Uh, you can read about it in some, to some extent, in professional arms control journals. If you really do a you know, major research effort on the internet, you can find the proposals and so on. But you know, almost nobody has the is in a position to do that. That's what activism are for. Activists and organizers are supposed to be able to bring this kind of material to a large general public, like you were doing in your political campaign. That's what. Uh, that's our task. You know, if we can't succeed, because we haven't tried hard enough. Uh huh. So, um, um, in order to let's say have more people become activists, because I, I became an activist. Uh, it was sort of it was a it was a decision, and I, I actually I'll tell you I. I I had read one of your books and I really couldn't understand it. I, I could not understand what you were talking about. And um, I'm not surprised. And then I mean, I have friends who teach in good universities, you know, top-flight universities, who have who used to use some of these books in their classes, but now can't because students are just not used to reading. I mean, it's just not a skill that people have mastered. You look at the YouTube, you know. Well, I get it tonight when I go home and look at my email. There's going to be hundreds of letters, you know, a lot of them asking questions. And, they, and most of the sources that people are using are YouTube. Well, you, you know, it's useful, but you can't l really learn things on YouTube. One thing this, you know, things are informal. I mean, there's no sources cited. You know, it's, uh, things aren't precisely stated. You don't know where to look next. Uh, and you just can't pick things up in a discussion that you can pick on, the print, on a page. But the culture has shifted significantly enough so that the young people these days just don't read. Mm -hmm. That's really serious. Yeah, definitely. Um, but again, that's what organizing is about. It's hard. I mean, like running your campaign was hard. Yeah, it takes it effort. Yeah. And a lot of people aren't going to put in the effort unless they can see some hope for achieving something. And, you know, again, that's uh, it's one of the, always been one of the main tasks of activism. I mean, you say abolitionism. Um, people wouldn't join the struggle against slavery unless they thought there was some possibility of achieving something which would overcome the costs involved, and there's always costs involved. Just the, even just the time it takes, let alone the reactions you get for trying to do something, as I'm sure you discovered. You know. Yeah, I discovered mm -hmm. um, the hard way. <laughs> yeah, that's, but that's the way it's always been, you know, as far back as you go. You know, go back to uh, classical Greece, you know, the guy who was forced to drink the hemlock was the one who was challenging uh, doctrine, not the flatterers at the, at the court. They don't, they don't get into trouble. No. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think our time is up, and I wanted yeah. to thank you very much. Okay, um, good to talk to you. It's good to talk to you. Sorry, too. I got to rush off.